We're living in an age unlike any other, with crazy new inventions coming out all the time. But this brain chip might just transcend them all, giving paralyzed people the ability to walk again, blind people the ability to see, and me the ability to see all your deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> Of course, there's a long way to go before brain chips get this far, as we've only began to scratch the surface of this technology. You've probably heard of Neuralink by now, another ambitious project by Elon Musk to put electronic chips into the human brain. Since our entire nervous system functions through electrical signals, our brains are, in a way, computers themselves, so they can be compatible with technology. Human trials have just been approved by the FDA, but we can see that these chips are pretty amazing already from the animal trials. Just look at this monkey playing Pong with nothing but its brain. So the surgery works by first placing tiny electrodes into the brain. This needs to be done in such a precise manner that they built a robot specifically for this. These electrodes can receive and send information to neurons. Then microscopic wires are connected to the electrodes, which ultimately connects to the brain chip. The brain chip is finally planted into the skull, and then within an hour, the surgery is complete. Now contrary to popular belief, it's not Neuralink's intention to hack your brain, despite their CEO being slightly sus. You're a weird person. <laughs> Instead, its current mission is to aid physically disabled people, like giving paralyzed people the ability to communicate, and visually impaired people the ability to see. Okay, quick lesson on the brain. The deeper you go, the more ancient that section of the brain is in terms of our evolution. This outer section is called the cerebrum, and it's relatively new in human evolution. Hence, it's what makes humans so human. This is the section where emotional control takes place. People who have damage in this section of their brain are seen to have major emotional swings. This is also the section where memories are stored, and it's what allows us to understand language. And of course, it's where mobility is controlled, as with several other of our senses. So the chip is placed on the surface of the brain. The part of the brain that controls motor function is also on the surface of the brain. So it makes sense as to why Neuralink's first mission is to give people a greater ability in motor function, as it's one of the easiest parts of the brain to access. This deeper section of the brain is called the diencephalon, and it controls a lot more instinctual behaviors. This section is much more ancient in our evolutionary history, so we have a lot more in common here with other animals. See, this is the section that maintains homeostasis. It keeps our body temperature in check and balances our hormones. It's also responsible for instinctual feelings, like hunger, our need to breed, and thirst. With all this mapping of the brain, we can begin to see the potential of brain chips that go way beyond helping people with disabilities. For starters, we could enhance our senses. I could sit on the nosebleeds, but zoom in my eyes and make it feel like I'm sitting courtside. I could hear my neighbors gossiping, but frankly, I don't know if I'd like to hear what they'd have to say. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! But even as complex as this sounds, this is still only surface level. We could enhance our entire cognition, improve our memory, increase our universally shot attention spans, and improve our ability to learn. We could all be that one kid that reads the chapter once and still aces the test. Or what about neural prosthetics? Not only for paralyzed people to regain their ability to walk, but for me to be able to hold the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. How about telepathic communication? Me and you could talk trash about the guy right next to me, even if you're on the other side of the world. And communication would be instant, no longer needing to waste time on all that typing. So primitive, for real. Now we talked about physical disabilities, but what about mental ones? These chips would be constantly monitoring your brain and could provide personalized therapies whenever needed. For example, someone who's dealing with depression could have their regions of their brain stimulated in such a way that they no longer feel any symptoms. Imagine treating mental illness in an instant. And speaking about monitoring brain activity, these chips could detect diseases early on and provide any necessary treatments, or at least alert you to go to the doctor. And this data could help us understand these diseases better, and even understand the brain better. One of the biggest mysteries about the brain is consciousness. And this is something that brain chips can help us explore. We could understand it, and maybe even enhance it, whatever that means. Maybe I can finally understand what it's like to be a dog. Of course, with the good comes the bad, and it's worth discussing the potential downsides of this kind of technology. For one, what if your brain chip gets hacked? That could give someone an immense amount of power over you. Not only could they access all your memories, but they could alter them. They could control all your movements and make you sit through all six seasons of Jersey Shore. And then make you watch it again. But hackers aside, what about the companies themselves? Oh, you didn't pay for this month's subscription? There goes your ability to walk. See, things could be behind some kind of paywall and only the richest of the rich can access the best features. But even if there's no malicious intent, what if there's just a glitch? Maybe the technology is outdated and activates some electrodes that it's not supposed to. 
Now out of nowhere, you're battling an addiction to furry. And in a future where implanting brain chips becomes the norm, it'll almost be impossible not to get one. See, if a company is between hiring someone with the brain chip and someone without one, they'd obviously pick the person with greater abilities, so people would be incentivized to get them. And then people who can't afford them will be ostracized by society. Of course, there's still quite a bit of time to go before we get to this point, but it's important to discuss these potential downsides so we can do our best to avoid them. Now, the FDA just approved Neuralink to begin testing on humans, so there's no turning back now. This is our future. But Neuralink isn't alone. Synchron is another company founded around the same time as Neuralink. These guys invented the Strentode, a device implanted without any need of open brain surgery. It's used to help diagnose and treat a range of brain diseases, such as epilepsy and Parkinson's. Also, this technology isn't as new as you might think. The first successful recording of the brain occurred way back in 1976, with the first brain implants being about 20 years later, in 1997. And yet, we didn't really see any controversy until recently, until this controversial man decided to partake in it. But is the animosity towards Neuralink really warranted? How safe are these chips really? For one, it's pretty non-invasive, at least compared to other brain surgeries which require your whole head to be cut open. This allows for a quick recovery and a pretty low chance of complications. With the robot performing the surgery, there won't be any human error that you see in conventional brain surgeries. Also, Neuralink's electrodes are tiny. The smaller the threads, the less likely it is that any immune response occurs. Keep in mind that other brain implants already exist, such as the DVS lead, which is used to treat Parkinson's and is 800 times thicker than Neuralink's electrodes. There's a potential for greatness to come with these chips, but also a potential for great evil. It's up to us to remain vocal about what's important so that these companies can be as transparent as possible. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!